Welcome back again. This is Larry Benko, W0QE. And this video is about building a variable antenna switcher. And by that, I mean something similar to what you're probably familiar with in a stereo, where you have a left-right control. And the left-right knob, if you turn it to the left, all the sound comes out of the left side speaker. You turn it to the right, all the sound comes out of the right side speaker. You put it in the middle, sound comes out of both speak speakers equally. We'd like to build something like that if I had two antennas. Say I had a 40 meter dipole that was oriented north-south and, an, and another 40 meter dipole that was oriented east-west. And I'd like to be able to put a different amount of power to each of the antennas. Now this is not a phasing scheme where I'm driving the antennas with a certain phase and amplitude relative to each other. The phases that these antennas are driven by uh, is, not the, is not the same necessarily at all. But the power I'm putting into each one, I can control independently. So if the two antennas are kind of standalone and don't have a lot of mutual coupling between themselves, then this circuit will work just fine. And I've done this circuit with some people uh, on 10 meters where they had a local net and the, and the antenna number one would be a vertical that they would use for the local communications and antenna two would be a Yagi. And if the band happened to be open in some direction, they would use the Yagi and uh, send some certain percentage of power that way and a certain percentage of power to the to the vertical I know one guy who's using a circuit like this on 80 meters too for some kind of net operations And both of them are quite happy Anyways, this is not so much If you don't have two antennas, you won't, won't be interested in this circuit It's more a case of here's some more stuff that we can do with SimSmith and show some of the power of SimSmith also So to begin with instead of building this circuit up, which is too complicated uh, to do in a video, I've already built it. And let's look at the pieces of it. Piece number one is the demon block here. And we start off with two antennas. SWR1 and angle one is how I have chosen to define the impedance for antenna number one. And that's the impedance at the device that's going to do the switching. Now, I could have done this as R plus JX, and that would have been fine. SWR and angle is kind of a little more intuitive to me because if I want to adjust the phase of one of these I can just put a little piece of transmission line in series with it um, Before I get to the, uh, sw the switching unit So I've chosen to do it this way. This block does three things It takes SWR and angle and converts it to R plus JX and Then it also does SWR and angle for the second antenna converts it to R plus JX and then it forces the frequency on the automatic tune network to match what the generator frequency is. And if we look at one of these just real quickly, um, come in with SWR, SWR minus one divided by SWR plus one is the reflection coefficient. So reflection coefficient is the first thing I'm going to calculate for antenna, and then angle one is just given. The impedance you get is the inverse gamma function of the Reflection coefficient times the cosine of the angle, and SimSmith works in radians, so it's angle 1 times pi divided by 180, and the same thing for the um, imaginary piece of the impedance, except it's sine of the angle. And if we do that real quickly here, we can see that it's like a 2 to 1 SWR with a 0 degree angle is 100 plus J0. Antenna 1 is this, is this, uh, this load resistor right here, the load impedance. And antenna number two is a load resistance with inside of this uh, ruse block. So SWR of two at an angle of zero is 100 plus J zero. SWR of two at an angle of 90 degrees will be 40 plus J 30. At 180 degrees, it'll be 25. It'll be 25 plus J zero. 25 plus, well, with femto, it's pretty 25 plus J0, and at 270 degrees, it is 40 minus J30. So we can see how that works. Now, if I want to go to 3 to 1 SWR, I can do that, and it becomes 30 minus J40 down here. Um, at 180 degrees, it should become 16.67 plus J0, and again, that's 7.147F for 10 to the minus uh, 15th. So it's effectively 16.67 plus J0, and of course at 0 degrees it should be 150 ohms. So that's a way to define the two imp antenna impedances. Now we have a circuit here which consists of 
Let me bring the note field up real quickly here. <clears throat> That's what I'm trying to do. We're gonna we're gonna we need a, a tuner, which is represented by this component LC1, and a differential capacitor. The differential capacitor is represented by this, comp this circuit right here. It has a common rotor, which is this point, and two different stationary parts to the capacitor, which are the other two point points. So a differential capacitor is three terminals. As we increase the capacitance on this side by five picofarads, we decrease the capacitance on this side by five picofarads. And if this capacitor had a um, minimum and maximum value of 30 picofarads minimum, 300 picofarads maximum. When this one is 30 picofarads, this would be 300. When this is 300, this would be 30. And it works just, just like that. And if we put the formula, we, we make this one be CD, which is the differential capacitor value. Then this one is C max plus C min minus CD. And that all works just fine. And that's that, I've done that in a couple other videos and that's just, just the way things work. So now we'll close. So so think of this for a minute. We got a, we've got a tuner. We're going to tune to some impedance at this point, and then we have this capacitor here, which varies these two capacitances uh, in relationship to each other with the two load impedances. And let's look at what that does for us. And before we go too far here, let me show what I'm going to plot. Also, I'm going to plot three things. Well, actually, I'm going to plot SWR, but, but SWR comes for free in, a Smith, uh, in Sim Smith. I'm going to plot L sub P, which is power. I'm going to plot, and that's the power in this um, impedance right here. I'm going to plot A dot R1 dot P, which is the power in this piece. Those are the two antennas. And I'm going to plot the total power. And the total power is just equal to each one of them added up. And power, in this case, has no phase, so um, it works just fine to, to add them up. So now let's look at what we got here. And before we do this, let's I put this in the auto mode. Now, notice the auto mode shows a perfect SWR, but it, what it's doing is it's adjusting the SWR, uh, it's adjusting component values as I am sweeping changing the, the capacitance here. What we need to do is put this in the manual mode, and then we need to come over here and do a little, do a little tweaking on it. That would be fine. So what I have here is a 1.4 to 1 circle. What I really would like to have when I'm all done is as I move the, the capacitor here, the variable capacitor, the differential one, I'd like to be able to, to adjust the power between the two antennas and maintain good SWR to the transmitter during the whole time. So here's what we have. Our total power varies from a low of about 96.7 watts to a high of about 98.5 watts. Pretty, pretty efficient circuit. And the green trace here represents the power in antenna number one. The pink trace here represents the power in antenna number two, and the blue trace down the bottom represents SWR. So as you can see, the SWR across the band is a little, maybe a little bit higher than one point, just about 1.3 to one. Yep. So if we would, were to, would tolerate a 1.3 to one SWR, which we should because it's a pretty good SWR, we are capable of adjusting the power from on this antenna from somewhere around 96 watts down to one watt. That's kind of cool. And likewise, while we're adjusting it, the other antenna sees a, a corresponding power increase when this one's decreasing. So what is special about this circuit? And the answer is not a whole lot. Now, these both these antennas have very good SWR. So what if they don't have good SWR? What if the antenna number one has, say, a 1.5 to 1 SWR, or one, I'd say, enter 1.6, leave it there. A 1.6 to 1 SWR at, say, a 40-degree phase angle. And antenna number two has, a, say, a, a 1.4 to 1 SWR at maybe a, um, a minus 70-degree phase angle. We don't see quite the same thing. Let's put this back in the automatic mode. Let it adjust the SWR again. Put it back in the manual mode. Come over here. And I'm trying to get all of this curve in this circle. And I may not be able to do it, but let's just see what happens. Yep. 
and you can see that I can't I can't quite do it but if I'm willing to put a little piece of transmission line in series with one of these let's see what happens as I change the phase of this one so I added a little transmission line 50 degrees worth of phase and now I can get this within 1.4 to 1 SWR. And we look over here and we see again the wavy SWR plot, all less than 1.4 to 1, which is the dotted line here. We see our power is not centered anymore in terms of the capacitor. So at the center point of the capacitor, you don't get equal power. It's the center point's a little bit off, but it's it's not that it's not that far off. Center point of the capacitor, um, yeah, you have a little bit more power to the uh, to antenna one than you do to antenna two, but that's not that big a deal. Um, again, you get a lot of power up here to antenna antenna uh, two, and a lot of power up here to antenna one, and the, and on the other end, and the, the other one has minimum power, and we cross through in the middle. So this is still a pretty useful, pretty useful circuit. Um, so we can tolerate lots of different impedances here, and you can play with this. I will make this file available. You can play with these as you wish. Um, what if the capacitor you found is not a 30 to 300 picofarad capacitor? What if it was a, um, I don't know, let's say it was a 10 to 100 picofarad capacitor. Now, that may this may work, but it will be I will have to tune this to a different point. So let's adjust this again. We adjusted it. This is going to be hard to probably match now. We're way off to the side here. Yeah, I don't think. close and the capacitance is pretty much gone to zero this 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 L network is not a good uh, it's not a good network to use here perhaps um, But you wouldn't you would not need to use an L network in your case. You could use a T network here and that would be perfectly fine too. Okay. So even in this case with just a one a ten to one hundred picofarad um, differential capacitor, I can I can still make the circuit work. SWR still less than one point four to one. Output power still pretty good. Drops down to a minimum of 92 watts, maximum of 95 or 96 watts. What if I want to use this on a different frequency? Let's say I want to use it on 10 meters. How would that work? We use it up in the single sideband portion of the band. Adjust the tuner. Turn it off. Now let's see what we can do here. And the reason that this dot is out here is because this point is outside of the adjustment range. I just it just happened to be set there from before. This is not looking let's see, here we go. I needed to swap the L network around again. There we are again. One a 10 to 100 picofarad capacitor works fine. Um, what if these? I don't know. What if, what if I had a, one antenna, an antenna that was really good, and one that wasn't so good? Leave those phase angles alone, I guess. I don't know. Um, you can play with this stuff, like I said before, as much as you wish, and see what we can do here.
ran out of capacitance, they were down to zero. So um, can't quite make that one fit. Again, like I said before, though, we could adjust the phase of these just a little bit. Let's adjust the, that's not helping me. I think what we have, the problem we have is, there's too much of a difference in SWR here. This still isn't too bad. Just a little bit above 1.4 to 1. Let's see if we made this, um, Say 40 picofarads to 400 picofarads for our ver for our differential capacitor. How much that might change things? Okay, there we just barely fit into 1.4 to 1 circle. So a little bit larger capacitor worked a little bit better. But again, it's not terribly critical in terms of the capacitor. The circuit here is adjusting to, to wildly different uh, impedances. We can look at what the impedance it's adjusting to. Um, at the center point of the band, it's adjusting to this impedance right here. But so in uh, the, the capacitors in series with the two load impedances for the antennas gives us our impedance up here that, that the generator sees. But um, this is you know, this is a pretty easy thing to do. It would take a little bit of adjustment to get it working in, to begin with. But after you got it working, uh, it's pretty simple. What you would do is if you had a device uh, that could sweep the band, you would sweep it and you would adjust these components with your antennas hooked up. And if you were unable to, to achieve what you wanted to achieve, you might put a little piece of coax in series with one of the two antennas to get the relative phases better. But um, when it's all said and done, this is kind of an interesting circuit. Here we see the, the, the equal power being quite a bit skewed from center, but that's kind of to be expected when you have that much difference in SWR. I mean, you certainly can try to match this one a little bit better before you put it into the circuit, but it really isn't necessary. You just you know, it's, it's just a point on a, on a dial, which is where they're equal. You rotate it to one side, it sees more power. You rotate it to the other side, it sees more power. And um, that's pretty much it. Now, in this case, we don't see as much of a power difference. We see going a little bit above 80 watts and a little bit below 20 watts. So it would be probably better to do, and do something um, that had a little bit more of a power difference. But again, that might be, you know, it might be good enough for what you're looking for. The whole point of this is that SimSmith gives us an incredible amount of power to do a lot of cool things. And all I can say is uh, you got to do a little bit of experimenting and playing with it. This is not a universal solution for everybody, but I uh, hope everyone's enjoyed this. And I will be back. And in the meantime, uh, if you haven't watched earlier videos on SimSmith, maybe now's the time to catch up. And again, if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. And until until the next video uh, best wishes to everyone